good morning and thank you for joining us this morning for another Soul Sister session. Uh, my name is Suzanne A. Simmons and I am joined by my good friend Joy Downing this morning and we're going to talk to you guys about and share some things that we've learned about anxiety, surrendering our anxiety. And I just want to start out by reading a scripture that has really helped me a lot. Psalm 46:10, the Passion Translation reads, surrender your anxiety, be silent and stop your striving and you will see that I am God. I am God above all the nations and I am exalted throughout the whole earth. Today we're going to talk about surrendering our anxiety and why that's so important and so relevant. Um, surrender means to cease resistance and that's something that <laughs> is really hard to do. It's the resisting, fighting against God that gets me into trouble. So instead of acknowledging that I'm feeling anxious, I try to resist it and stuff it, but I just want to talk to you guys about not ignoring it and denying it, but really surrendering and giving in to um, just accepting it and then uh, trusting God with it and talking to people about it. So before we really, really get into it, I'm gonna have Joy pray for us Amen. this morning. Good morning, sisters. Let's go ahead and pray, amen. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for these Soul Sister mornings. Mm -hmm. I know I just look so forward to it on Saturday when I get out of bed to turn on my YouTube and just um, listen in mm -hmm. and just feel like I'm connected to the sisters. Thank you so much for just the wealth of wisdom that you've given so many of our sisters here in Christ. We pray that you will really just guide Susan A and I as we just share what we've learned and the things that have helped us to really battle our own anxiety, God, and just mm -hmm. really ultimately, God, how you have really rescued us, God. Amen. We love you so much. We thank you for this this morning and we lift this up this day up to you in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to start off by just defining anxiety. Um, the American Psychological Association defines anxiety like this. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, mm -hmm. worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It's an emotion. Yeah. We yes. all experience anxiety. Some experience it on a more intense level than others, but we all do. Yeah. And so I just wanted to talk about just what led us to this topic. That's right. How did we get here, Susan A? So <laughs> just so everyone else knows that yeah. Joy and I, sometimes we ride our bikes together on a, a Friday morning uh, and one particular morning, Joey was asking me just how I was doing, and I just let her know that I was feeling a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. that particular day, and it was in April, mm -hmm. and I just remember at that time, the things that were causing me anxiety were I was interviewing for a new position, right. mm -hmm. and I just kept telling myself to be myself, but I just felt like there was a lot of pressure and there was a lot of just feelings of not knowing what they were looking for and mm. who that what type of person but I just kept telling myself you have to be yourself and don't worry about what they're who they're looking for or what they're looking for and another thing that was going on at the same time was I volunteered to be the new hire orientation facilitator mm -hmm. and so this was a volunteer thing no one made me do it but all of a sudden after the training I was overwhelmed with the responsibility mm -hmm. and I just thought that I'm not going to be as good as the person who was training us. Well, she's been doing it for years. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but initially I just felt, oh, she's so smooth. She does it so well. What am I going to, you know, how am I going to do this? So I was feeling a lot of anxiety and pressure, self-imposed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Bobby asked me to share at one of our squad events, mm -hmm. just a small little devotional, just to get everyone encouraged and I just felt like, how am I going to do this? I mean, what, how, what, what am I going to put together? What am I going to say? What am I going to, you know, do to encourage people? And then 
Erlen Sugarman asked me to share at a shepherding meeting on a Saturday morning coming up in May. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, there's too many things piling up. I started to get overwhelmed. And I was actually taking a class also, so we were, I was working on my final paper okay. for the class. So it was just like one thing after another that just kept mm -hmm. building. And on top of all that, I have two girls and they're mm -hmm. getting older, so I was worried mm -hmm. about just different things. They're driving, Definitely. Saida lives far away, mm -hmm. you know, her safety and just in general, just, you know, different activities they're in. So just everything just felt like it was all coming down on me and I felt just this pressure mm -hmm. to, um, to be polished for the interview and for the new hire orientation and this just, everything was just, building so for me the anxiety was just overwhelming and I and I talked to joy about it and and then at the same time the God led me to a a podcast yes. that helped me yes. so much to just look at anxiety in a different light mm -hmm. and um, but the <clears throat> question I want to answer and talk about are what are some ways anxiety impacts us spiritually mm -hmm. and for me the impact of anxiety is just the feeling of overwhelmness, right. worry, um, feeling uh, the pressure to um, perform or right. just, you know, be a certain way like that during that interview and, and but really knowing in my heart, I would just want to be myself, but yeah. just feel like what, what are they looking for? Um, and then just uh, just that self-imposed pressure. Ultimately, what helped me was just tackling anxiety from uh, from the perspective of looking at scriptures and talking to you and other people and just really um, calming down and, and taking it one step at a time. But, oh, but anxiety can be overwhelming and yeah. people can experience anxiety in all levels. Mm -hmm. So what are some ways or how are some ways that you experience anxiety and how does it impact you spiritually? Yeah, I, 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 first of all, I appreciate you just being vulnerable, you know, because this is a real topic that many people feel, mm -hmm. right? Um, sometimes there's so much shame attached to feeling anxiety or anxious, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, no, you know, we are Christians, we should never feel overwhelmed, right? But we do, we feel that. Exactly. Right? And um, I just appreciate you even kind of having this on your heart and it's been cool because even Reese shared at, at, at a midweek about 40% of people really struggle with anxiety, yeah. right? And then Michelle and Grace did an amazing women's devotional and they shared vulnerably about their own, you know, uh, issues with anxiety. And I think this topic, it's, it could feel shameful, but the more that we realize that it's not, you know, this is just a part of you know, like you said, it's an emotion. emotion. Exactly. We shouldn't feel that. And, and then the more that we get open, the more we can be free. Right. And, you know, for me, I feel all kinds of anxieties. And, um, you know, one of, my, one of them is finances. I'm mm -hmm. always feeling a lot of anxiety around it because what I realize is that there's so many things I want and mm -hmm. I have a great disciplined mm -hmm. husband that's, what do we need? <laughs> and so there's this constant battle of, I'm not gonna get what I want, you know? Right. And so that produces anxiety, fear. It's basically fear. Exactly. And um, another one that you, you know, that you hit on is just having, you know, with my kids, I could feel so much around that. And I think yeah. being in um, the past, pan in the quarantine, I was so hyper-focused on them because they were in my face all the time. And it was like, oh, I have a project now. I can try to control them and work on them versus really, right. you know, allowing them to be their own people, right? Exactly. Um, and then another area that I feel a lot of anxiety is my career. And yeah. I think just really learning how to surrender how everything's going to unfold because a lot of this is just how I want it to be. I don't want to experience any waves and you know and I want things to work out smoothly and when they're not I just start to fear right and um and so you know that's that's how my anxiety shows up but yeah. there's other areas but those are just three exactly. I don't want to overwhelm I mean, we actually could go on and on <laughs> and on, on about anxious. It. <laughs> exactly so you know what you made me think of a couple of scriptures mm -hmm. and also so 
Proverbs, in the Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 12, mm -hmm. verse 25 says, anxiety weighs down the heart. Mm -hmm. And when you were sharing and when I, and I was thinking about things that I struggle with, I just thought, you know, when we're going through anxiety, my yeah. heart is just weighed down. Right. Um, and true. then another scripture that, <laughs> that I thought of was in Galatians, Galatians chapter three, verse three. Mm -hmm. And it says in the New English translations, mm -hmm. are you so foolish? Although you began with the spirit, are you now trying to finish by human effort? Mm. And I think that when you said that we're trying to control it, mm -hmm. that's exactly mm -hmm. us taking over, mm -hmm. taking all the, the power back from God yeah. and saying, you know what, God, I'm going to uh, handle this now. Yeah. And that's how that's the feeling I was fighting against mm -hmm. when I was feeling all these overwhelmed feelings in April. like. I knew I wasn't in control, but the tendency is to want to take control and try to handle it all ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just know from experience too that the more anxiety that I'm feeling, the less time I spend praying. Mm -hmm. Like I may start off thinking I need to pray, mm -hmm. but my prayers are shorter than they need to be. Let me hurry up. <laughs> yeah, let me hurry up so I can start worrying again. Take or, or just reading the Bible becomes not as focused mm -hmm. because I'm so worried or, or fearful about something. And so instead of turning to God and really relying on his word, mm -hmm. I, I tend to pull back and rely more on myself. Sure. And it's never going to work that way. It's never mm -hmm. going to become what we think <laughs> it needs yeah. to become. The outcome won't be what God wants it to be. So I, I know that that is a big one for a lot of us too. So um, I just want to share that one thing that has helped me mm -hmm. is just spiritual affirmations. Mm -hmm. And I've been, ever since we did the forming class mm -hmm. and, and, and class. Byron read his affirmations mm -hmm. and I've written them out before. That mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily new, but I think the newness of, or the new revelation that it showed me was that how powerful it is and how mm -hmm. we need to do it more. I need to do it more often. Yeah. So I wrote out this spiritual affirmation mm -hmm. list and it just starts off by saying the spirit of truth lives in me mm -hmm. and he is with me forever. He is my counselor. He will teach me all things. He will remind me of everything Jesus said. I am loved. God loves me completely. I am loved by God, God who created me, who knitted me together in my mother's womb. I am loved. I am loved by the creator of the universe, God Almighty, God the Father, Abba. God is, in, God is good. I am loved. I am loved by the people God has placed in my life. Mm. I am loved. I am chosen by God. God has set me apart. He has made me holy. I am appointed by God to do great things. Mm -hmm. I am an heir of God. I am a co-heir with Christ. I am chosen by God. I am a new creation. I am in Christ. I am a child of God. God's love is lavished mm -hmm. on me. I am full in Christ, complete. I am a member of Christ's body. I am God's workmanship. I am light in the world. I am a holy and royal priest. I am a minister of reconciliation. I am the righteousness of God. I belong. I belong. That's beautiful. And I just think that I need mm -hmm. to tell myself that every day yeah. because it's true. Yeah. And when we're going through anxiety, we're listening to Satan. Oh yeah. His lies. His lies. And so one of the, <laughs> I just recently saw a movie. Okay. It's called Luca and it's the oh, Pixar Disney yeah. movie. Okay. And in the movie, the thing that really stood out to me that was so beautiful was this little boy was afraid and his friend was telling him to silence that voice in him. And he said, silence Bruno, silence him. Mm -hmm. And the little boy was like, silence who, you know, like, what are you talking mm -hmm. about? And he says, that negativity that the little boy was mm -hmm. afraid. And so I started saying, that is exactly what I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to name the little voice inside of me that is negative, And I'm going to say, silencio, Bruno, mm -hmm. silencio, and quiet that negative voice That's because great. it's a lie. And this is 
the truth. truth. Yeah. You know, Susanne, it's a good point. Um, I shared before, I am listening to a book. I want to say I'm reading, but I'm listening to a book. I'm studying a book called um, Get Out of Your Head. Mm. Get Out of Your Head by Ginny Allen. And she talks about the three lies that we believe. Mm -hmm. And it's really th what causes anxiety. And a lot of what we're sharing that I hear, one of the lie is, um, I am not worthy. Mm. That's the biggest lie. I'm not worthy, right? I'm not worthy to have that job. Mm. I am not worthy to, you know, be able to speak and share my convictions with others, right? Um, I'm helpless, mm. you know, I'm a victim, I'm helpless, right? And the other lie is I'm unlovable. Mm -mm. And the more I just heard you share about your words, I just you kept saying, I am loved, I am loved, yep. you know, and that how that just really helps us to, to really defeat those lies. And, and I want to share like personally, I realize when I'm feeling anxious, I leave a lot of wreckage. Yeah. You know, oh, for me, goodness. it's like, yep. I, you know, oh, my recently, you know, just a personal story here. Um, you know, my daughter, oh, I don't want to, one of my children, I'll say one of my children uh, in school, there's a particular teacher. I was having a hard time just trusting this teacher and their methodologies and just seeing some of the mm -hmm. um, things that were happening. And I just wanted to really control the situation, get in there and like, let's work it out. But it wasn't really allowing my child to really grow and, and really giving them the, the reins to kind of work things out. Right. But I was so afraid. I was jumping the gun. Mm -hmm. You know, not only was I hurting my relationship with my, with my kid, because I wasn't really respecting their boundary. Mm -hmm. You know, I was also causing, you know, a really a lot of wreckage in this relationship with the school because here's this crazy parent, you know, right. thinking, you know, I could control, I, could, I have all the answers. But, right. you know, if I just would have breathed, you know, instead of, I, I believe in being proactive, but I was mm -hmm. reactive. Yeah. It was like, ah, you know, right. my mind is, this is going to affect where she goes to college and now it's going to affect where she gets a job and so that means she's going to be broke and she's going you know i go right. like 30 years down the road just because of this one class right right and, right and and so i realized like the more like you talked about like my anxiety if i am taking the reins and i'm trying to be self-reliant there is no room for god exactly and god's ways are better they're always better always but yeah. in the moment I think I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I just need to just stop and first say, okay, I'm being reactive here. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it caused more anxiety in my child because they're like, well, should I be worried about this? And you know, it honestly, it all worked out. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it would have worked out if I would just would have left it alone or, or, you know, kind of encouraged, mm -hmm. but I was just too hands-on. And so it was a lesson. It was a hard lesson for me yeah. to see how my anxiety can affect my relationships, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm not careful, you know, I'm trying to control it versus really, you know, it's going to be okay. Let me just see how I can support here. Right. I don't need to try to take over, but so. So that makes me think of a scripture. Yeah. Another scripture. <laughs> that we need these. And this is Philippians 4, 5 through 7, Amplified Version, mm -hmm. Amplified mm -hmm. Bible. Let your gentle spirit, mm -hmm. <laughs> let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. And that's what doesn't happen when we are filled with anxiety, right? They don't see our graciousness or our unselfishness, our mercy, our tolerance, or patience. Yeah. So it says, let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The Lord is near. He's always mm -hmm. near. He's close at hand. Mm -hmm. Do not be anxious or worried mm -hmm. about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation. And that's what's mm -hmm. so hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be mm -hmm. patient and not anxious in, in any circumstance or situation mm -hmm. because that means everything and everything. Do not be anxious. In, in any situation. And that is so hard to yeah. let God be in control when we think we know better, right? Because we are in the middle of it and we're feeling it. 
but every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, mm -hmm. that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all Amen. understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts mm -hmm. and your minds in Christ yeah. Jesus is yours. Our minds. Yes. Get out of my head. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love that because that is definitely the scripture I constantly go back to mm -hmm. whenever I am struggling spiritually with anxiety. I go back to Philippians 4 and I read it in every translation to yeah. just get a fresh take on it or just a fresh hearing of it and then I pray. I, I, I focus more a lot on the Thanksgiving part. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the, well, here's my next question. Okay. When I, <laughs> my next question is, what are biblical solutions to our overcoming our anxiety? And, and one of the biblical solutions that I found is the spiritual affirmations, and then mm -hmm. also making sure that I am grateful yeah. and writing out my gratitude yes. or appreciation, yes. uh, making appreciation lists mm -hmm. like uh, we learned in forming. And because it does, it helps you to remember mm -hmm. how good God is and yeah. how he is taking care of us and how he is in control of all things and how um, everything will work out ultimately yeah. if we put our hope and our trust in him. Yeah. And I just wanted to share before we get too far gone. Okay. Um, the podcast that Joy and I, that I shared with Joy, that I discovered and sh shared with Joy, it comes from a podcast called Deep Spirituality. And the specific podcast was why anxiety is the enemy of spirituality. And then that's one or the first one that I heard, but then I discovered there were two more in the series mm -hmm. called Defeating Anxiety with Spirituality, Six Ways to Surrender Anxiety. And then there's a bonus podcast that I've been sharing with people called God is Not an Imaginary Friend. Mm -hmm. And so that was what really like helped me a lot. And uh, that's another thing that we could do is just find things that are going to be helpful to yeah. us to grow spiritually. Not Netflix. Not Netflix. Not that it's bad. Not that it's bad, but you know what? <laughs> it definitely can eat up a lot of our time. So, you yeah. know, just finding devotionals on yeah. and reading books, yeah. uh, definitely the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and then sharing them with people, just letting, and then talking about what we're going through so that we can get help from one another. Um, it's so intense, but the spirit is always moving. So at my job on Tuesday, one of the, um, my job invests a lot in, in us. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> my job invests a lot in us, in the employees. And one of the resources that they gave us was an app called Thrive. And in Thrive, it tells us that there are eight types of uh, responses that people could have to anxiety and they call them biotypes. So we'll all fall under one of the eight biotypes of anxiety and anxiety, the, the hormone for stress and, and anxiety is cortisone. So mm -hmm. cortisol, sorry, cortisol. Mm -hmm. And so just wanted to mention these biotypes real quick. One of them, the first one is rumination. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of ruminating. We, we think a lot about thinking over events and over and over events and uh, connecting a negative emotion to those, e those thoughts. And then there's the ancient, anxious avoidance, you know, just mm -hmm. procrastinating and then basically taking ourselves out of it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the negative bias, you know, just basically you see the worst in all situations. Mm -hmm. um, threat response, fight, flight, or freeze. And then we have the emotional numbness, just basically not finding any pleasure in anything you've numbed out, just the anxiety has numbed you out. Context and sensitivity. And the context and sensitivity would be uh, you lose motivation in all areas. And then the inattention is just losing focus. Mm -hmm. So we all, uh, the last one is cognitive fog, just mm -hmm. being totally fog brain, mm -hmm. not sharp, difficult to focus, mm -hmm. but we all, when we experience anxiety, mm -hmm. we fall under one of these eight, we can experience more than one, but we all respond 
like one of these eight when we're mm -hmm. feeling anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I can definitely be an anxious avoider. I don't want to do it at all. I don't want to deal with mm -hmm. anything at all or just, you know, procrastinate, put things off. Mm -hmm. Or I can be the ruminator and just be mm -hmm. thinking about things, thinking about things going over and over and it's always negative. Mm -hmm. So, um, but those are the bio those types really that we could all kind of uh, very very helpful yeah I think I when feel you like I've experienced all of those exactly yeah. you do and when you are um, when you're in it then you know you know when you know them these things then you can look for them and see mm -hmm. a pattern awareness or even, awareness is key exactly right. and then you can work on doing better yeah so I know that I have this a is, scripture that yes, I want to share. Yes, I want you to share a scripture. So go this for is, it. This is a scripture that really helped me, and, and I know we're going to be wrapping up here. But um, in Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8, the tr the, we love the Passion Translation. It's like the new go-to translation. But it says, I am standing in absolute stillness, silent mm. before the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for him to rescue me. Only God is my Savior, and he will not fail me. For he alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always mm. protects me as my champion defender. There's no risk of failure with God. So why would I let worry paralyze me? Even when troubles multiply around me, God's glory is all around me. His wraparound presence is all I need. For the Lord is my savior, my hero, my life-giving strength. Trust only in God every moment. Mm -hmm. Tell him all your trouble and pour out your heart longings to him. Believe me when I tell you, he will help you. Pause in his presence. I love that. Thank you for Especially that wraparound <laughs> presence. He's all around. Yeah, because that's one of my favorite things to know about God is that he is a shield of love and favor around us. And that wraparound presence, that's awesome. That it really yeah. is. And thank you so much for being here. There's so thank much to you. share about anxiety. Yeah. There's so much to say about it. There's so, it's so relevant all the mm -hmm. time. So especially. Like it's always wrapping around too. <laughs> exactly. So we got to combat it, all right? Put our shields up all around. When I think of that wrap around and shield, I think of that force field. God is protecting right. us. But yeah, there's just, mm -hmm. just so much to share. And I really appreciate you being here with me. I love you, Susan A. I will all, I mean, if you call me, I'm there. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And yes, thank you guys also for being here and just coming in on this journey with us in this conversation, eavesdropping in on it, but we yeah. definitely want to include you. Um, and I hope you did feel included in this conversation, this soul sister session. And, uh, that's pretty much, I mean, there's so much more to say, but that's our time this morning. And I'm so grateful that you were able to sh share this time with us. I hope you come back and join the next Soul Sister session next it's week. It's gonna be good. It's Somebody's gonna be good. Gonna be it's good. always <laughs> good. It's always something that is worthy of a conversation. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. I'm so grateful that I was asked to do this and that I, I followed through after ruminating. <laughs> and feeling anxiety about it but i'm so grateful i have for friends like joy and and grace even asking so thank you sisters it was awesome being here and i hope you enjoyed your your time with us have a good day bye Love you, soul, sisters. soul sister number nine sock it to me one more time <laughs> <laughs> i got it in, got it in. Thank you for joining us. I hope this has been educational and inspiring for you. If you'd like to know more, please join us by going to study.laicc.net and we'll be happy to contact you and help you in any way we can.